FM. Preparations are underway. As you can see, everyone is getting ready, uh, making sure they're particularly comfortable and prepared for the big day. Where else would they be but at Flemington? It is a glorious day here at Flemington. We're in store for some wonderful races. And one man that always delights a crowd here at Flemington, in fact, he's the star of the Australian racing season this, this year after winning the Cox Plate just recently. We're talking about the one and only Damien Oliver. Not since the days of the great Roy Higgins has a rider dominated the Melbourne racing scene like Damien Oliver. In the current season, he's already established a huge lead in the Jockeys Premiership and may become the first man ever to reach 100 Melbourne winners in the racing year. The kid from Perth has his tail up. Confidence is very important. Um, I suppose um, in a race, um, if you're confident and, and the jockey's not as confident and he's thinking twice about maybe a decision, um, I think your first decision most of the time is your best one. Well, we won't see that one, mate. We'll just, uh... These days, race riding is a seven-day-a-week profession. Consequently, it's important that a top jockey stays fresh. It can be a little bit stressful, you know, on the body and uh, the mind, I suppose. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you to perform. Um, I think you've just got to probably spend your quality time that you have off, uh, your relaxation time. Um, you've got to make more use of it, I think. And, and, um, and probably prepare your time a little bit better. Perhaps the day that Oliver came of age was Derby Day of 91, the day he was beaten on naturalism. The criticism of his ride helped in the making of the man. It made me grow up a lot. Um, it was probably the crossroads of it in my career. Um, you know, I, I probably looked at racing at that stage and, and thought, well, you know, uh, the pressure I was under, do I really need this? Four years after those doubts came the pinnacle. On a grey and gloomy Tuesday afternoon in November, Damien Oliver etched his name into the history books. That last 200 metres of the race, the things that go through your mind is amazing. You know, as a kid growing up, you dream to win a Melbourne Cup. And uh, you don't actually realise that it, it hasn't happened, I suppose, until you go past that place in your first. Um, yeah, it was like a, it was a big uh, load of pressure off your mind. And, um, you know, it's every kid's dream that ever wanted to be a jockey to win a Melbourne Cup. Two days later, he came back to earth with a thud, quite literally. And maybe the blame lies with his mum's choice of fashion. We were going to Oakstone, she had a green dress on, and, and green's very unlucky in racing. I said, Mum, what are you doing wearing that green dress? So sure enough, my first ride down it went, and I broke my collarbone. It's unlikely that golf will ever take over as D. Oliver's number one profession. <laughs> But thank goodness for that. It would stop us from admiring a true master of his craft. Winning big races is what it's all about. Um, it's great to win those, and I do get excited when I win them because it's, it's, it's great fun, and that's what it's all about. Just as we did last week at the Valley in the Cox Plate. Another gem of a ride from a gem of a rider. Yes, who can forget his win on Doremus in 1995? Well, now, here's a chance for viewers in Australia only to win a fabulous great weekend away in luxury, courtesy of the new Sydney casino, Star City. Here's Angela Bishop with the details. An exciting thing is happening in Sydney. I'm in the Lyric Theatre, just one part of the most amazing entertainment destination in Australia. Called Star City, it's set to open on November 26, and you could be here in Sydney to celebrate Star City's first weekend. Star City is giving away the ultimate prize. It includes a trip for two people to Star City to see Tom Jones live in concert on the 28th of November. You and a partner will be flying to Sydney business class and taken to Star City. You'll stay in the executive suite for two nights and enjoy dinner at Star City's exclusive restaurant, Astral. And just to make your stay even more memorable, you'll have $2,000 in cash to spend. There are also four weekends to be won at Star City and tickets to see Dean Perry's Steel City. All you need to do is call 1902 and answer this simple question. What's the name of Australia's most exciting entertainment destination? 
Now, a great prize there from Star City. And all week during TEN's coverage of the Melbourne Cup, you can uh, we'll be announcing the winners during sports tonight, in particular on Monday the 10th of November. Now, just a reminder, this particular competition is only open to viewers in Australia. So a word to our international viewers, you'll have to make it to Melbourne next time, won't you? Now, it wouldn't be the Melbourne Cup, Tim Webster, without a word from your next guest, would it? It certainly would not. We spent several fairly hilarious Melbourne Cups with uh, Peter Crackers Keenan. Hello, mate. Tim, it's lovely to be here, actually. Yeah. Always good to see you. Now, this time, you're the patron of the Whip Round for Cancer. Tell us quickly what it is. Well, it's anybody that's got any loose change at a TAB, uh, just uh, Whip Round for Cancer, Anti Cancer Cancer. We'll just give them a bit of money because they really need it. They do a great job. It's a, ter a terrible disease that affects most of oh, our yeah. families. Yeah. and. Uh, there's people walking around in vests here today, so you can give them money. So if you win, just throw a little bit each way. and Throw uh, that shrapnel in there. Yeah, yes, or leave a note, it doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> I've just been talking to Jack Denham, I've uh, gone back might and power. Uh, well, I'll donate too again. If it, uh, what do you mean you've been talking to Jack Denham? We don't talk to anybody. He said g'day, I said best of luck. He said thanks, mate. <laughs> That's what he did. OK, whip around for cancer. TAB's around the country. You'll yep. be here at the course too. Some volunteers wandering yeah, around with little bags. Volunteers and volunteers walking around here. Okay. And they've got a vest on, so it's a great cause. They're trying to raise $200,000. We hope oh. they can get there. Really do. Footy training starts soon? Uh, 10th of November, St Kilda are back in there. Yeah. And uh, really having a crack at it next year. We really reckon we can go some in the next step. And uh, I'm trying to get a winner. I do like Civic List today. Do you? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's one. Bazil Bay you like in the next two, don't you? Yeah, I like right. it. And uh, Davey Haywood's got one of 20 to one in the next uh, called Pride Rock, all the way from Wagga Wagga. The Place of many pros. <laughs> Good to see you always, buddy. Nice to see you. Crackers Ken and there, Sandra. Back to you. Thanks, Tim. Peter and Jenna in the mounting yards with the details for race five. And Peter, Peter Perry's had a big carnival so far. How do you think he'll fare in the next race? Well, I know how Jen thinks he'll fare, Sandra. She thinks he'll win. And after having seen this horse, I'm not surprised. But there's the shot from the Whitman's light ship up above Flemington. It's uh, currently drifting over the top of the Maribyrnong River over there and providing us with those magnificent shots. And the boys have got a bird's eye view up there. And thankfully, they've got a camera in there as well so that we can see it all and enjoy the shots. They're on their way to the gates now for race five, the Anderson Consulting Plate. Scratchings are 15, 18 and 19. So we've got a feel of 16. Start us off with number three, Hawksmoor, Mick Dittman, Jen. He had no luck at all at Caulfield. And then as Johnny Marr can do with his horses, he took him up to Terang and he absolutely bolted in as expected there. There's a lot of pace on in this race, Peter. I think it's going to suit this horse. He can get back. He should run on strongly. He's a very good chance. Number four, Orion Shane Dye for Graham Rogerson. Well, he was given every chance at Mooney Valley and uh, never liked to finish all that much closer. He's yet to win on a dry track, so I'd say a place chance is best for him. Five high stream, Danny Burrett and the rider. Always gets back and runs on. I think that might suit some of these horses here today. Typical effort at Mooney Valley at his last start. There's pace on. It'll suit him. He's some chance. Peter Hayes trained the last winner and has worry sand here with Stephen King up. Well, this horse, I believe, broke down in January. Um, he's resumed with a run at Caulfield and he strips a bit fitter here today. So I think uh, he's probably there with a place chance in this. Number eight, Bazile Bay has got the hoodoo colours on, the all white, but uh, ridden by Jim Cassidy, wide gate, but geez, a nice looking animal. He's a lovely horse, he's drawn, uh, he's only had the six starts, he's won four of those and finished third on two occasions. Very, very good horse, impressive win at jo Geelong and he's the horse to beat here. 11 Pride Rock, Greg Childs. Um, I thought this horse has been racing quite well in a lot weaker company. I couldn't find the Cootamundra tape, so I couldn't have a look at his last win. But I saw a few of the other ones, and he's not the roughest. They're still waiting for it to come back from the chemist, Jen. Number 12, <laughs> silence prevails. Frankie Dettori in the saddle. Well, uh, as I said before, Frankie Dettori will always give them a few more lengths. Uh, he races on the pace, this horse. I just don't know that he's quite good enough, though. 14, Lord Quickstep. Brett Preble is the rider. Yes, uh, he, he went very well last start at Bendigo, and he won in very fast time as well. The start before he won as well. He's racing well. He's a chance. Tips? My tips, I'm going with number eight, the favourite here, Bazile Bay. From number 14, Lord Quickstep, and number three, Hawksmoor. Dan, last minute tight call on race five. Well, it's Bazile Bay, Bazile Bay, Bazile Bay, virtually $2.50. He's showing that's horse number eight. You're getting great value about every other run. And look at the top seven. They're all better than double figures. Favourite is number eight at $2.50. And number 14, Lord Quickstep, is the second favourite at $7.50. And he is clearly that. 
So over the page, the big odds horses, Olakai and Greenwich. That's race five on the tote. Let's have a look at race five in the ring with Tim Gossage. It's a race in two, according to the punters, Dan. Brazil Bay has been kept very safe, very short, opened up. But Lord Quickstep, they have come for it. As you said, about $7 on the tote. Not that in the ring, about three or four points sure. In fact, it's a race in two. Tim Gossage in the betting ring. They're on their way to the gates now. Race five, the Anderson Consulting Plate. Five past one, the starting time. Back with the fifth in a moment. Famous Flemington, prior to the running of the fifth event, we're getting ever closer. We're only about uh, two and a quarter hours away from the Fosters Melbourne Cup, race number eight on the card. But race five, Roy Higgins has joined me now. And uh, Roy, you were keeping a close eye on High Stream on the way around to the barrier. Yes, I'm finding it very difficult to get her around there. She was jacking up. You see her on your screen there now. Uh, they've been taking five minutes to get, her, get him that far. He's been very reluctant. Let's see moonlighting again as a clerk <laughs> of the course. It's, uh, incidentally, you said it's race five. I'm going for lunch after this. <laughs> OK, there's two very nice horses in this race. Here, the 8 and the 14. Watch them in this race. I think they'll prove both hard to beat and watch them for the future. They've both got a big future. Three, Hawksmoor and 10, Zar Hero would be my two other chances. 8, 14, 3 and 10 for race 5 and let's go for lunch. <laughs> Dual Melbourne Cup winning jockey and a hungry jockey in Roy Higgins before race 5, the Anderson Consulting Plate. And Roy will be with us when he completes his commitments with Sport 927 for each race on the program. We can see the barrier attendants are hard at work there. And Johnny Letts for the second time, moonlighting as a clerk of the course, so he's getting a second income here today, which the way he spends money is probably a very good thing, I'd say, Dan Malicki and Gary Willis. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, definitely, Peter. I hope he knows where to get his paycheck. But, by gee, this is a tough race. Gee, this crowd's building up here, Peter, from where Dan and I are sitting here looking down. It's quite incredible. But uh, there's a great shot of some of the crowd here. It's uh, amazing how it's built up here. It's great to be in Melbourne at this time of the year. But, uh, gee, this race, um, Bazil Bay, he'll have to be pretty good from 17, Dan, and uh, also Lord Quickstreet, he's drawing 15. You generally want to draw in a little bit uh, on these races, but uh, I like the look of another Hayes horse, uh, Warry Sand, number six going round, ridden by Stephen King. Now, Greenwich went up to the line riderless. The attendants are having awful trouble with high stream. You heard yes. Roy and Pete talking about number five, and he's proving a big handful at the starting gates as well. Yes, and there's the uh, map, and you can see that 1,400. It's right on that bend. And if you get trapped wide by G, you can stay out there the whole race. But uh, these two are well-fancied horses. As I say, Belzeal Bay, ridden by Jim Cassidy, drawing 17. And the other one, Lord Quickstep, it's drawing 15. So they're going to have to show a bit of pace to get over. I dare say he'd be odds on with a much better barrier draw, Brazil. Well, that's though. right. It's, uh, he's very short for a drawing so wide, Dan. Now, Brazil Bay, it's wearing the all-white colours, so it should be easy to pick up. It goes up to the stalls. We've got Olakai away from the line and also Belzig, so we're close to a start. It's often, a, you know, from the 1400 here, it's often your horse uh, that can run a good 1,200 to win this race. You, uh, I know it's only f it's 1,400, but they seem to uh, roll along. And they're all set to go, all locked away. This is race five. Away they go this time. Decent breakaway. Silence Prevails was the first to jump away. Pride Rock is going to race handy. And likewise, Brazil Bay, the favourite from out wide, is cutting across in front of the field. And he's going to race forward. He's looking for the lead, Brazil Bay. And gets it at this early stage from Silence Prevails. Pride Rock third. Hunter Magic going forward to fourth. And then came Hawks Moore, who's on the outside of Boris Sand. Lord Crick steps about three wide. And Ryan's midfield over on the rails. Arrogant Prince was next, but also travelling wide around Diamond. Duke and then Zahiro on the fence. Then came Greenwich, who's wide around Olakai and Siri Nell, getting back Belzig and High Stream at the rear. They're inside the 700 now, and Brazil Bay just coasting along in front. He's two lengths to Silence Prevails. A length away, Hunker Magic, and then came Pride Rock in fourth position on the inside from Warrisan. Out wide, it was Hawksmoor when they turned for home. Lord Quickstick is four deep. Olakai comes five deep. Arrogant Prince in the middle of the pack, and then Zahiro inside Diamond Duke, High Stream, Siri Nell. It's Brazil Bay. Given a bit more rain at the 300, and 
he darted away. He's three lengths in front of Silence Prevails, who can do no better. Hawksmoor gets out the talents. Sirinel making round, but Bazile Bay's charged away from them. He's five in front with 100 left to go, and they've got no hope of catching him. He's going to win like a real good thing. Orion getting up on the fence with Hawksmoor for the placings, but Bazile Bay, Bazile Bay's bolted in. Oh, we're going to hear a lot more of this fellow. Bazile Bay's won it by six. Hawksmoor second, Orion third, then Siri Nelg and Zar Hero. Arrogant Prince, High Scream, Diamond Duke, and then came Lord Quickstep. It was in a bit of bother throughout, followed by Warrasan, Belzig, Hunker Magic, Silence Prevails, Olakai, well back in the field, Tide Rock, and Greenwich at the tail. Well, Danny, I was worried about this horse getting over. I haven't seen a horse cruise over that easy for a long, long time. He just went across. Jimmy Cassidy had a handful of horse and just could do what he liked. And uh, as you see in the straight, he's just, you know, spaced them and uh, ran 122.1. And what a carnival for Paul Perry. That's his third winner yes, of well, the carnival. He brings these horses down here, and he's a very good trainer. And Jimmy Cassidy, well, that's just a pipe over here. Well, here they are. And Jimmy's just said, well, bye-bye. I'm going home. And that's just what this horse did. He's just uh, left him right behind, just riding him hands and heels. Hawks four in the black there, three from the fence. That's Mick Dippin hard at work. And I think Hawks four would run second. Eight, three, and four are the numbers. Bazile Bay, Jim Cassidy, Hawksmoor, Mick Dittman, and Orion, Shane Dye. Yes, Eight, three, Orion's four. the one right on the fence in the white there, getting up with the breastplate on. Fourth star you, hero, fifth in Siri Nell. But Go. you can see this horse was just incredible win. You know, to, to show that speed out of that barrier and just drift, get across the way he did, it's a uh, well, that's Very about five or six lengths. Now, if he can do that the way he did from that sort of alley, it's surely it's not going to be long before we see him at group standard. Oh, definitely. Here's a great shot of him. You know, Jimmy's just waving the weapon. He's not actually hitting him. And just this horse is just loving it and just working away. Well, I think, Peter, you can uh, book a regular spot for uh, for Paul Perry on the Channel 10. Telecast, that's his third winner so far. And it won't be the last time we talk to him at this horse over a carnival, I don't think. He is impressive, Paul. Yeah, lovely horse, isn't he? He's uh, sort of probably been lightly raced all the way through. And, uh, you know, he's just sort of come down just for a look over the carnival. And, uh, yeah, it might be a nice horse for the future. Good-looking animal, too. Yeah, really, really nice race race, isn't he? Yeah. What about the gate 17? When he came out, I just thought he might have got a bit fired up over by about the half mile, and Jimmy, you know, might have found it hard to restrain him, but he made two runs. Yeah, yeah, but I think he did. He sort of over-raced a bit early, didn't he? Probably probably the plan was if something run along, they get a set-off, you know, but I think when he began that well, he's, uh, he's, he's probably... He did, didn't he? He probably over-raced a bit, but no, as you say, he found some of the end, too. Yeah, yeah well, he's just donkey licked them at the end. Um, how high can he fly, this horse? Well, he sort of, was, sort of keeps improving. He's only very lightly raced, so you, you think he would get that a little bit better, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think he will. <laughs> well done. Thanks very much. Tom. Paul Perry, the winning trainer. A lot to like about that. Here's Johnny Letts out on the track now, and with him, winning rider, Jimmy Cassidy. Jimmy, you must be wrapped in this horse. Let's see, he's got Group 1 written all over him, mate. I rode him at Geelong, and... Uh, just the feel of him. I rode him work prior to Geelong and, uh, mate, he's just group one material, this bloke. Jimmy, the barrier 17, it didn't seem to worry you that much. He began, he jumped quick, he got across, you weren't worried about the gate. No, uh, let's see, it was, he was always going to be there and, I well, mate, if he had drawn 24 today, I wouldn't have cared. No, and, and no one's been rushing for the lead today like Saturday, have they? Well, a good thing, he relaxed in front and, uh, He's a racehorse, he, he just likes to, he, he wants to do business, you know? Yeah, Jimmy, didn't he let go when you let him out at the 300? Oh, he well, put let... about four on him in, in, in 50 yards. Mate, the acceleration and the, and the ground he gets over, he's very exciting, this bloke. He's ran 23, uh, 122, and he's run his last three in 34 seconds. Wait, we let him go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Jimmy, and good luck later in the day, mate. Thanks, Johnny. Jimmy Cassidy out there with John Letts, and I think he could have started from a boat on the Maribyrnong River by the 1400 and still won that race. We're going to be hearing that name a lot more. Bazile Bay, most impressive. The placings there, 8, 3 and 4. Hawksmoor second, Orion third. Smart time of 122.1. And as the crowd gives Jimmy Cassidy a great ovation as he comes back to scale on this rising star, we'll take a break from Flemington. You're watching Network 10's live and exclusive coverage of the great day, Foster's Melbourne Cup Day. Well, it was only a few years ago that the Phantom ran second in the Melbourne Cup. I don't think it was that Phantom, but it's time now to study the form and also time for the stewards and the jockeys to do their duty. And there is the rider of Lord Quickstep, Brett Treble getting up on the scales. 
after the running of this the fifth event and we have seen a star of the future there i am quite sure running home his last 600 meters in 34.6 correct weight there is the weight signal after getting up on the bit at about the 800 meter mark dan we're going to be hearing a lot more of that fellow undoubtedly it makes you wonder he's been beaten twice pete at wyom and gosford makes you wonder how on today's performance 230 the win and 140 for Brazil bay three hawks more two dollars 90 and number four orion three dollars 40 the quinella eleven dollars the trifecta 181 10 and the running double returned 29 dollars 60. official winning margin was five lengths three quarters of a length second and third in the time one 22.1 it's 834 and of course the the correct weight is there on race five and here is our Master of Ceremonies, Rob Gaylard, for the presentation after the Anderson Consulting Plate. Thank you very much. Race five on a card. Our presentation is just about ready. And I think uh, everyone here on course and watching throughout our televised uh, coverage today have seen a very special and very promising young horse. Mr. Doug Reed, I am representing the VRC to make the presentations. Mr. Martin Rolson, the managing partner of Anderson Consulting. Thanks very much, Rob. Um, this is the third year that Anderson Consulting, one of the world's leading consulting firms, has been associated with this fantastic race day. And we're absolutely delighted to see a horse of this quality uh, take out our race this year. So on behalf of all my uh, fellow partners, some of whom are here today, I'd like to congratulate the owner of uh, Bazile Bay, Mr Phil Priestley. I'd like to congratulate uh, the trainer, Paul Perry, on having yet another winner and uh, also a fantastic ride by uh, Jim Cassidy. Thanks very much. Well, they were racing in two divisions there, Bazile Bay versus the rest. Hawksmoor leading the rest in with Orion running third, but look at the head on that horse, Jenny's a lovely individual, isn't he? Is he ever, and he's a very tall horse as well. I was wondering why he's only had seven starts today, but maybe they've just let him mature and grow, and I think it's worked wonders. We're getting closer, race six coming up, and uh, we're heading towards race eight, of course, for the Foster's Melbourne Cup, but the sixth is the Schweppes 1000 at 145. Number eight here, honourable mention. This horse uh, is resuming from a spell, but his last two runs weren't too bad. And of course, he's got a big weight drop here today last time he carried 57 and a half 51 and a half he carries here he was on the worst part of the track there at Sandown so I think he can go very close number two Walnut she's a filly uh, she boxed on quite well at Mooney Valley and then she absolutely bolted in at uh, her last start at Ballarat she's very good I think she's a good chance number 11 Stenner I put him for third so there's Jen's selection and that is number eight honorable mention <laughs> honorable mention yes uh, number three Dana Jaya for Richard Friedman, it's a Dane for Johnny Letts and dual strike for myself and I've gone for one just at each way value because it's such a hard program, I've looked for a bit of value in these races today Tim Gossage, what can you tell us about the previous and the one coming up? Bookmakers are very slow to put their prices up Peter for race 6 on the program, they've copped a bit of a battering in the last couple of races, Bazile Bay while there was good money for Lord Quickstep, there's still plenty of money for the very impressive Bazile Bay, so they are suffering just a little bit, Walnut will open Open up the favourite in this race, race six. But I can tell you, as far as the Melbourne Cup is concerned, it's still might and power. Punters just waiting really for the real betting to start before we get to race eight. But they do expect Marble Halls to really push might and power for favouritism in the Cup, Pete. Thank you to Tim Gossage down in the betting ring, and I'm sure there's going to be just a flurry of activity. Every Melbourne Cup, we always have the big plunges happening in the lead up to the Cup. There's not too much betting done early. There's already been a lot of big bets uh, landed as well, too, haven't there? Yeah. Punters are cashed up, Sandra. Jen's cashed up, so she might unleash on the bookmakers. <laughs> and we'll be back with you for the next event, race six, shortly before the starting time of 1.45. Look forward to it, Peter and Jan, and just two hours to the big race. Well, the Melbourne Cup Carnival is a very busy time with over 100,000 visitors from within Australia and overseas coming to the city for, of course, the big day. Well, our crew is once and again staying at the Hotel Sofitel, and the good people there have looked after our every need. It is in the heart of the city. It's quite comfortable and spacious accommodation with the finest of food in the award-winning restaurant Le Restaurant. For the week that many of us are spending here in Melbourne, the Hotel Sovatel really is our home away from home. We'll have more after the break. Back 
here at Fabulous Flemington with the fabulous fashions. As you can see, some a little zany, some a little outrageous, but that is the fun of Melbourne Cup. We have been showcasing a couple of young designers each day throughout the Cup Carnival and we're about to introduce another one. In fact, there are two designers behind the label, six. We describe the look of Six as dynamic. It's very directional. A tag that's been used to describe this is that we're um, deconstructionists. Um, isn't it? I mean, we sort of set our label up when that trend was very in vogue. is a pair of men's trousers. We've actually deconstructed them and turned them into a simple wrap skirt. The jacket, we've done something interesting with that. We've actually moved the emphasis of the jacket all to the back, so you've got a very minimal front. The sorts of people that wear six are bridges, all ages. Some of our clients range from 18 up to 55. You'll be meeting those designers in person behind the label of six with Lynn Talbot on the members' lawn a little later in our coverage. I have with me right now, um, well, star of the stage and screen and now television, Mr yeah. Hugh Jackman. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. It is great to have you. Now, you're singing today the uh, Waltzing Matilda before the big race. How are you feeling? Pretty good, actually. I'm not too nervous. I had a... A little warm-up uh, singing at the Bledisloe Cup, and that was in front of, I was told just before I went on, 400 million people. So uh, I wasn't very happy when I was told at the time, but it's uh, when I heard last night there's 350 million people watching today, I was kind of like, oh, it's easy. No, I'm a little nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, I won't tell you, it's actually about 500, but nevertheless. <laughs> that, sorry. Tell us, what have you been up to lately? I know you've just uh, started uh, a new television career. Yes, well, I'm doing a bit of hosting, actually, on, uh, uh, for Foxtel on a show called In Fashion. And uh, we're actually on Thursday coming out here doing a whole special uh, for Oaks Day. We're gonna, that'll be airing next Monday night. So um, I'm doing my research. That's what this is called. Oh, I won't let you watch too much. No, no. <laughs> now you tell me make, also. Make it, oh, well, thanks you. <laughs> oh, I'm relieved. <laughs> now just tell me quickly. You've also got a film coming up. Yeah, it looks like I'm filming in January. So uh, an Australian movie, and I'm very much looking forward to it. That's sort of um, been a dream of mine to move into that. So um, this is gonna be great. And what sort of role? Um, well, it's basically an Aussie, well, I don't want to say too much about it because we're yet to sign on the dotted line, so uh, it's, uh, I'm superstitious and that's called jinxing it, but uh, basically it's a 